Hey, guys. All right, so I took two planes and a train to come to Malmo, Sweden today to talk to you about engineering for empathy, and specifically how to have empathy in your core business. And that's the business of work and the business of life. So why is this important? Why is it important to engineer for empathy? It allows you to maximize value creation for your customers, for your employees, and for yourself, your time, which is the only non-renewable asset you have while you're on this planet. And since I want to practice what I preach, I want to be empathetic toward this, the audience and get straight to the heart of it. So here's the answer. This is the formula. What you do, compounded by how you do it. What you do, powered by how you do it. You must master and be able to ridiculously clearly communicate what you do and how you're doing it. And I know that's super basic, but I think that some of the universal laws of the universe are very simple, and hidden the variables are mysteries and complex ideas made elegant and simplified. So, how do I know this formula? Well, my name is Marcella. Oh, I see we're delayed a little bit. What I see here is not what you guys see. Um, I'm Marcella. I'm 30 years old. I live in Brooklyn. And what gets me out of bed in the morning is fighting for excellence. Specifically, we all have in our heads a version of ourselves, our best selves, the superhero version of ourself. And this is Jess. She's my best friend. She's also my co-founder. And what gets her out of bed in the morning besides coffee is unlocking people with her own brand of generosity and kindness. She's one of the best people managers I've ever met in my life. Um, and so together, I met her at Harvard we discovered that our missions were quite similar and decided to start a company, a company that would support superheroes. That company is Hello Alfred. Hello Alfred is part technology and part service, and we give you leverage so that you can do the most meaningful things with your time. Uh, we think about ourselves as an operating system for your home and for your life. If you were an Alfred customer, it would mean that you would have a dedicated home manager who would visit you every week, once a week, to take care of things on your behalf. They would have the keys to your home, and then we'd go in there and put groceries in your fridge, they'd put your dry cleaning in your closet, they'd take your mail away, they might leave you some flowers, and you could basically ask them to do to anything. Over time, our customers ask us to do more and more, and we do that through the people and our technology, which powers everybody's requests into giant groups, and then sends it to vendors so that we get preferred pricing and service. You might not have heard of us, but in the last two years, we've had a significant amount of press and success of our own. We've been called uh, the fixer for your life, and we operate in Boston, New York, and San Francisco. Um, and like any good startup, we launched at TechCrunch Disrupt. Uh, we also won TechCrunch Disrupt in San Francisco, but we didn't build the company to flip it. In fact, we understood that the pursuit of excellence is an asymptotic pursuit, that it would be really hard and very painful, and that we were going to stand up for the things that were important to us. This is me at the Brookings Institution, which is a think tank in the United States, and I'm talking about the future of work. I've also been at the White House and worked with the Secretary of Labor on this, thinking about what will jobs in the future look like as technology does more and more routine work. But perhaps what makes us most unique is we are the only company in the world that has the key to your home. How do we do that? Well, we earn your key through people, the hands of empathetic people who are taking care of you, and technology, technology that works to anticipate, understand, and learn. So back to that formula. What you do is compounded by how you do it. So what we're trying to do is earn your trust. You don't get it on day one. You get it by combining people and technology, and specifically having deep empathy and having tech that gets outcomes on your behalf to earn trust of your customers. Trust is literally the key to how we get your key. So where did we learn our business formula? We've had some teachers that I wanted to share. The first is Danny Meyer. Danny Meyer is a restaurateur, a lot like Matt Orlando, who you just heard. And he has some pretty famous restaurants, including Union Square Grill and Shake Shack. 
And he says, it's the job of any business owner to be clear about the company's non-negotiable core values. They are the river banks that help guide as we refine and improve our performance and excellence. A lack of river banks creates estuaries and cloudy waters that are confusing to navigate. I want a crystal clear, swiftly flowing stream. Hospitality exists when you believe that the other person is on your side. Our second teacher is a value that they hold in Japan, a motenashi, which is loosely defined as the art of selfless hospitality. It is the cornerstone of Japanese culture. To welcome someone into your home or establishment and being able to anticipate their needs is seen as a privilege for the host. And working in the service industry is regarded with the utmost seriousness and respect. There are no menial tasks if the result ensures a great experience for the guest. Our third teacher is a friend of mine, a professor at the University of Toronto named Jennifer Real, and she says, you only get one core value. It's the governing value every employee can summarize in less than a sentence. So with those three teachers, we understood service, systems, and our power rule. If you woke your employees up in the middle of the night, or you woke up in the middle of the night and someone said, what do you stand for, how do you do it, what do you do with your life? Would you, able, would you be able to say something? At Apple, they'll say, we want to make a dent in the universe. At the Four Seasons, if you wake them up in the middle of the night, they'll say, it's about treating others the way you want to be treated. At Google, it's about doing no evil. That's how they do what they do. For us, it's building trust. And what I learned about the power rule is it's actually your fingerprint, the thing that makes you unique. As a founder, products and services are manifestations of the founders. So building trust actually comes from the core of Jess and my relationship. We trust each other and wanted to build something amazing and impossible in the world. We have trust with each other. And that's what started the company. So back to that formula. What you do is powered by how you do it. So what is your formula and what is your power rule? And make it stupidly simple so that you'll dream about it. Putting that business principle to use, I wanted to share some of the things that we've learned as empathy is a cornerstone of our company. And the first is that imagination is the muscle of empathy. It is the ability to imagine someone else's experience. And to be honest, it is a human superpower. It is the last mile of what humans are going to be able to do better than machines, always. But it is a muscle, and you have to practice and you have to take time to do it. So I have an exercise that I call being an empathy cowboy. This is a picture of Teddy Roosevelt, a former president of ours. And if you look at this photo and you take the time to imagine what it feels like to be on that horse with the leather and the rocks and the sun beating down upon you, you start to have more empathy for his experience in this photograph. But you can get really deep with this exercise. Go a level deeper and think about, what did he have for breakfast that day? Does his stomach hurt him? Does he have a headache? Did his wife yell at him to get out of bed? Even deeper than that, this is the leader of the free world. Do you know how many times he took this photo was taken? 20, to get the perfect shot, because he's communicating to the world what he stands for, power, jumping over with ease. So go deep, be an empathy cowboy. The second thing we learned was making employees the primary customer. And so I shared a universal principle with you and said it's basic, and I think that there's a power to simplicity. I think you should choose one customer, and that customer should be your employee. And by creating support systems that help them, and by trusting them, they will then in turn support your customers, and your customers will trust them. Making employees your primary customer means making decisions and trade-offs that prioritize their experience. In practice, that looks like us deciding to make them W-2 workers instead of contractors when our entire industry was doing the latter. It was more expensive, it took more training, but it communicated to our employees that they came first and that this was a company that they had ownership and agency of. Third lesson we learned was pushing power to the edge. In biology, organisms evolve at the edge. This is where all learning occurs. My industry and technology, they told me, P 
people cannot scale. People can scale if and only if you have cumulative knowledge, where every decision ever made in the company adds and is learnt and held by the entire organism. So less abstractly, what, what does that mean? That means our employees are hiring other employees. Our employees are training our new employees. There's a guild, and every day we're getting better together. The standard operating procedures for how we enter the home, how we put groceries in the fridge, how we take things out of the home, are all written by our employees. The fourth lesson I learned was you have to build it into the UI. That's our app. It's super simple. It's just one dashboard, and it's about controlling your home and having the visibility of things that are happening on a recurring basis and the ability to ask for more. At the top is a picture of your dedicated home manager communicating that they are the most important part of this equation. Beneath it are the things we will do for you. They're turned on automatically. We're just going to do them. And the bottom is the A button. That's our logo. You press it, and you can ask for anything, trusting us to do more. We build it into how we have pictures of all the employees who've ever worked for us, whether they leave or not, on the walls of our office, as they're a part of our DNA. It's in how we onboard our customers. We have our Alfreds go to the door, actually shake the hand, and take your key as the beginning of a trusted relationship. From then on, you are at work and often will not see your home manager, we call him the, your Alfred, ever again. But that initial relationship moment is extremely important to us. You also see it in the small gestures, like this handwritten note. We leave handwritten notes every week. And all of these design touch points, all of these, even things like we don't require our Alfreds to wear uniforms, it's really their choice. So it's a barometer of how strongly they feel about our company and how much they care about the mission. All of these touch points communicate this is a human company made for humans. This is about trust. Finally, you can't design people, you can only inspire them. You can design your tech, and you can design the systems for how you communicate with everyone at your company. So make the work noble. We are literally in the business of picking up people's dirty laundry. And if that's taken the wrong way, it could be a story of inequity. But it's actually a story about connection, about forming relationships, about intimacy, about trust. Many of our customers are, in fact, families. And many of our Alfreds are working, sorry, they're working now, but they were stay-at-home moms. A connection that's pretty magical and very rare. And this takes, full, takes, you full circle, sorry, takes you full circle to the formula, which is your power rule. You have to have a straight line to your power rule. If the work is noble, it's to benefit your brand, the meaning of what you're doing, how you're doing it, and for us, that's trust. And when all of these things work together, we are caretakers, and the audience is you. This is the hospitality of everyday life, it's the luxury of practical help, and it's being taken care of and taking care of other people. So what is your formula, and what is your power rule? And make sure it's ridiculously simple. Be an empathy cowboy. Push power to the edge. Make employees your primary customer. Build it into your UI and make the work noble. May we go live our best lives together as superheroes. You can find Jess and I in New York. You should pay us a visit. We're in Flatiron. And you can find me on Twitter at MS Sapone. Thanks, guys.